My dad is about to have knee replacement surgery and he finds these front porch steps to be just a little bit too difficult to get up and down as it is. The rise is just a little bit too tall and the tread is not near deep enough. So while I'm staying with him for a few weeks, I'm gonna go ahead and take the opportunity to rebuild these steps so that he can get up and down just a little bit easier. First things first was to demo the old staircase. And with it being so small, this took no time at all. Sorry, mom. Next, I grabbed some quarter inch plywood and first made a template of the new proposed rise and run, which is a six inch rise and 11 inch run. The old rise was seven and a quarter and the old run was only nine inches deep. My dad couldn't even get a full foot on the treads. After tracing out the template on my two by 12, I grabbed my circular saw and started cutting it out with a little bit of jamming in between cuts. It's far quicker if you make all of the cuts in one direction on the stringers first and then come back and make the rest of the cuts go in the opposite direction. I would make the majority of the cut using my circular saw, but then come back with my sawzall in order to finish the cut. Next, I moved back over to the front porch and started preparing it so that I could attach the stringers. The brackets made for attaching stringers have a really wide base on them. And so in order to create a nice flat surface to attach that base to, I cut and attached a few two by sixes. But then I grabbed my hammer and nails and attached the stringers using the dedicated stringer hangers. And if you're interested about anything that I'm using, I have left you links in the description below. With the stringers up, now it was time to start making the treads and risers. This is just a bunch of repetitive cuts. So what I did was I set up my multi-stand so I could place a stop block since all of these are gonna be cut the exact same length. However, before assembling everything, I did give everything two coats of paint. Okay, with everything dried, I moved on to attaching the post. Now, since I'm changing the rise and run, I'm having to add an additional step, which means the front of the staircase is no longer on concrete, but is on asphalt, which is too soft to anchor into. So instead of anchoring the stairs at the first step, I'm anchoring them at the second step and going into this concrete. Once the anchors were tightened down, I had Cody hold a level on the post for me so that I could go down to the bottom and attach the bracket to the post. But before attaching the post to the stringers, I decided to use some of the scrap two by sixes to create some additional support. Then I tucked my body into this little bitty space and drilled a through hole through the stringer and, and through the post to where then I could use two carriage bolts per post to secure it to the stringer. Woohoo, starting to look like steps. All right, next I started adding on all of the risers. Whenever you're putting in your treads, go ahead and just use a scrap piece of board cut to the size of your overhang so that you can very quickly put all of these in their place. You see a lot of treads that have a nose on the front or an overhang, and I chose to make mine flush just because I don't want any tripping hazards for my dad. So between that and these being more shallow as well as deeper, I think all of these things will make a big difference overall. Yeah. Alrighty, next I moved on to cutting the angle on the post for the handrail. With these being four by fours, I ended up having to make two passes, one on each side with my circular saw to go all the way through. It can be a tricky cut, but that's what makes it rewarding whenever you nail it. <laughs> I love making good cuts. And you'll see on these handrails that I left the two by fours really long. And this is because it's far easier to cut them to match whenever they're both secured in place, rather than cutting them beforehand and then securing them. To take away some of that sharpness on the edge, I grabbed my palm sander and rounded over all the edges. Moving along to the styles. Now I'm gonna be matching the same styles that my folks already have on their porch. But to make this job go a little bit easier, I cut the bottom rail, but then clamped it onto the top rail so that I could then mark the location of where I wanted all of the styles on both of the rails, the top and the bottom at the same time. And this allowed me to then unclamp the bottom rail, go and secure all of the styles to it, then position the bottom rail into place and just make sure all of the styles were plumb before attaching them. 
And I was going to call it a wrap after that, but, but that gap in the top riser from whenever they built the original porch was just really bothering me. So I decided to come back and add some caulking. Now I'm going with a product made by Sashko called Big Stretch because it's meant to fill in gaps up to two inches and it can also stretch up to five times the original joint size without cracking. It's rated for interior and exterior. So for projects like this that will definitely have movement over time, I think it's perfect. And while I was at it, I went ahead and went over the entire staircase, filling in all of the screw holes as well as the slight gaps here and there around the styles. and the treads where I cut in around those posts. This is a 100% acrylic latex caulk, so it was ready for paint after about four hours. Okay, so that is it. You know, thinking back on it, this is my second uh, set of stairs that I've built, and I probably should have started with a smaller set like this instead of the humongous set that I did in my own backyard. Uh, if you want to link to that video, I will put it in the description if you're looking at doing a bigger staircase. Uh, that's it for this one. Hope that you enjoyed it. I'll see you on whatever it is I'm working on next. Perfect. Perfect. I have to cancel the surgery. <laughs>